Hello, my brother and sister. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Welcome to this hope cast from the Fountain of Hope Christian Church. I am Reverend Dr. Charles F. Marshall, the senior pastor. This is a place where we encourage spiritual growth and nurture God's children to take care of self, community, and the world through Christian education, radical hospitality, authentic praise, and worship, and service. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we should rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Fountain of Hope Christian Church. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to gather together those that are joining us. Lord, wherever they're joining us from, Lord, connecting with us, bless them. Bless them and, and bless this time together, Lord, that you may be glorified, that, that your people may be edified, that they may be uplifted, that they may be empowered, that they may be encouraged. If there's any need, Lord, in the name of Jesus, meet according to your divine and will and majesty. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us join in as we read the gospel according to Luke, the 19th chapter, beginning at the 37th verse. When he came near the place where the road goes down the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in a loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, teacher, rebuke your disciples. I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stones will cry out. As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, if you even you had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in on every side. They will dash you to the ground and you and the children within your walls, and they will not leave one stone on another, because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us share in these announcements. If you have any prayer requests, simply send your prayer request to Fountain of Hope Christian Church, P.O. Box 55039 Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Alternatively, you can reach us by email at fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com and our compassionate team will fervently pray with and for you, trusting that God will work according to His divine will. We also invite you to connect with us through our website at www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com. There you will find our monthly newsletter. Inside, you'll discover a wealth of valuable information and engaging content to enjoy. If you wish to be added to the list serve to receive our newsletter, please enter your email address and click on the subscribe button. We'll send it straight to your inbox every month. Thank you for joining us here on our YouTube channel. If you have not done so already, we encourage you to please subscribe. Click on that subscribe button and you'll stay up to date with all of our latest content and receive notifications whenever we post new messages or communications. Hit that subscribe button and let's stay connected. You can also connect with us by looking at our daily scriptures. Each day, these inspiring scriptures will enrich your spiritual journey. We invite you to visit our website to access and meditate on them. See how they can positively impact your Christian walk. We would also like to remind and or invite you to our weekly virtual Bible study held every Wednesday from 7 to 8 p.m. To be a part of our Bible study sessions, simply send a request to fountainofhopeatl at gmail.com and we'll gladly provide you with the link to participate. 
for those of you seeking a deeper study beyond our regular Bible studies, we are thrilled to inform you that there are some classes available to you through the Christian College of Georgia at no cost or offer at a low cost. These classes are designed to cater to your spiritual growth and personal calling, whether that's to become a minister, a leader, or you just want to grow in your spiritual journey. Explore our Christian education page where you'll find the links to these wonderful learning opportunities. Please take advantage of these resources. And as you engage in these classes, we would love to hear about your experiences and growth. Heartfelt thanks to all of you who have been giving. Your gifts are instrumental in enabling us to reach and impact people across the world. If you're inspired to join us now in giving, there are three convenient ways to make your contribution. PayPal. Go to PayPal and use the username at Fountain of Hope to make your donation. Go to our website www.fountainofhopechristianchurch.com for a seamless online giving process. And you may also mail a check to Fountain of Hope Christian Church at P.O. Box 55039, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you for these gifts that are being laid on the altar right now. Those that are opening up their treasure and laying it on this altar at Fountain of Hope that are joining with us, Lord, that they are putting their treasures, they're investing in this ministry as we share ministry around the world. Lord, we ask that you would bless this offering, that it may return to the giver 70 and 100 fold, that it may go toward building your kingdom as only you can do. God, continue to bless and strengthen that we may grow in grace and peace toward your divine will. God, we just thank you and we praise you. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. There is a word from the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, for this opportunity to come before your throne, let me decrease that you might increase. Lord, that, that you may be glorified today. Lord, that your people may hear you. Lord, that the meditations of my heart, Lord, might be acceptable, that your people may be uplifted, that your people may be encouraged, that your people may be empowered, that your people may be lifted up today that they will do better, that we hear you and they will obey and they will move toward where you want them to be. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Let us turn in our Bibles to the book of John, the 12th chapter, beginning at the first verse, where it says, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here, a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a, about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume. She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of the disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, a keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, because whom he had raised from the dead. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came, not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well. 
For on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our message today is don't miss it. 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 It's so easy to get distracted on the wrong thing. That we miss our blessing, miss our lesson, miss what God wants us to have. We are approaching many elections in the next few days, few months, and even years. And there are high stakes for how things will fall. Whether you're on the right or left, everyone has stakes in the field based on problems that continue to weigh heavy on the American people. Problems, issues, and people think different issues are more important than others. The Pew Research Center provided a ranking of the key issues in the United States, and some of those issues are inflation, affordable health care, ability of Democrats and Republicans to work together, drug addiction, gun violence, violent crime, the federal budget deficit, the state of moral values, illegal immigration, quality of public K through 12 schools, climate change, racism, condition of roads, bridges, and other infrastructure, domestic terrorism, international terrorism, and unemployment, and more. As I share them in your hearing, you probably say, Reverend, I already know these are problems. These are problems I hear about, I know about, I know they exist. The question is, what is being done about the problems? When you listen to the typical news broadcast, it starts the hour with what the key story is perceived to be. And as I watched the news the other day, I just weeped because I watched as bodies were lifted from rubble. I don't care whether they were one side or the other. It was a mother lifting her child, dead body, out of a rubble where it had been bombed, debris from bombs. And at this point, I did not see a war, but I saw someone's child, someone's son, someone's brother, someone's daughter, someone's sister being lifted out of the ground from under the rubble. The bodies were limp from not having any life in them. I experienced the same thing when watching the news reports about the Russia bombing Ukrainian homes and schools and between the news reports, I hear commercials from people slamming the other opponents from nefarious deeds that they claim that one has committed in the commercial. And then I hear the weather report about 15 minutes into the newscast. All of this bad stuff is happening in the world. And it causes one to have trouble with hope. But don't be distracted. Don't miss it. Don't miss what God has for you in all of this. November is the season of Thanksgiving right before Advent. Although stores are going up with Christmas decorations right now, it is still the season of thanks. And for this very meaningful time, I encourage you to very simply don't miss it. While you're planning for your Thanksgiving meal, don't miss it. Some of you are planning for your Thanksgiving vacation. Don't miss it. Some of you are just waiting for the sale so that you can go shopping for Christmas. Don't miss it. You will miss what God has for you in this season and beyond the season unless you are intentional. So first of all, gratitude is always appropriate. Gratitude is always appropriate. Verses one and two say six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus lived whom Jesus had raised from the dead. And here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor and Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining in the table with him. Mary and Martha had a brother named Lazarus. We know the story who had died. And we know the story of how Jesus spoke to the grave and Lazarus came from the grave before Jesus called Lazarus, Jesus wept. It was one of the few times an account of Jesus was giving of him crying. And now some time has passed and Mary and Martha are so happy to have their brother back that they invite Jesus over for some dinner to say thank you. 
How important is it to tell the people that we know and appreciate them while they are living? What good can a long speech at a funeral do for a person lying in the casket? Absolutely nothing. Thanksgiving is not just about giving thanks to God for the many blessings that God has given us. It's also about seasons of gratitude for each other. Who has helped you in so many ways this year? Have you said thank you? Who has opened doors for you? Have you said thank you? Who has been kind to you? Have you said thank you? Thank you, regardless of the language, is an acknowledgement from one person to another of what has been done. In this life, we depend on each other for so many things, yet many times we don't say thank you. And in the case of Mary and Martha, they throw a dinner party, amen, and invite Jesus as the guest to say thank you. Mary was so moved that she took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. The fragrance from the perfume was so strong that it filled the house as she poured the nard on his feet, on Jesus' feet. And she wiped his feet with her hair. Note how personal this is, her hair. Often wiping feet was a custom of hospitality for guests, and it was a mark of respect and humility. It was a mark of cleanliness. How do you feel when you enter clean homes? Amen. Versus junky and nasty and filthy and or dirty homes. Do you feel more at ease or do you have some feeling of uncomfortableness? Maybe you're nasty too. So, <laughs> And if you feel at home, God bless you. How do you feel when you enter a nasty public restroom versus a clean restroom? Makes a difference, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Now, Jesus entered this home filled with the aroma of some good food cooking. He sits down to enjoy the company of the rest of the people that are there. And along with them, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are the hosts. Lazarus is sitting there with him. And have you ever been to visit some people who are just good company? When you go, you enjoy yourself. While you're there, you enjoy yourself. When you leave, you remember how good it was. They make you feel comfortable. Jesus is smelling the food that Martha is cooking, enjoying the conversation that Lazarus is giving him. And now his dusty feet are cleaned and washed with this nard by Mary. Mary even wipes his feet with her hair, not a rag, not a brush, not even a washcloth. Amen. Mary uses her hair to dry Jesus' feet. Can you imagine Jesus must be feeling pretty good about now? those sensations, those feelings. Jesus had previously visited their home under other conditions. And at that time, Lazarus was dead and people were blaming Jesus for coming late. Yet Jesus spoke to Lazarus and said, oh, and he rose from the dead. Gratitude is always appropriate. David says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Psalm 104. Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 18. All circumstances mean all brothers and sisters. All means when you're winning. All means when you're losing. All means when you're happy, when you're sad. All means Oh, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss your blessing. Gratitude is always appropriate. But beware of the noise, number two. Beware of the noise. Beware of the noise. When you are trying to do the right thing, there will be distractions. When you're trying to live right, do right, and be right, there will be someone or something that comes to confuse things and try to take you away from doing what God has desired for you in that moment. This moment in Mary and Martha and Lazarus house is about showing Jesus gratitude for how he blessed them to bring Lazarus back from the dead. In the middle of a good time, there will be, you know it, at least, at least one. Everybody is having a good time, and there's going to be one fool in the crowd. Amen. Somebody 
Somebody's going to do something that just ruins the mood for everybody. In the middle of a good time, there will be at least one. This is a reminder for you as you prepare for the family and friend get together. This Thanksgiving, amen, hallelujah. The plan is to have a good time. But there will be some uncle, some aunt, some nephew, some brother, some sister, or some friend who comes and brings such a nasty spirit with them. All right, you like, oh, you could have kept that. Don't miss what you came to do during your Thanksgiving celebration because of these people. Verses four through eight remind us of that one person who can turn the whole mood sour. That person is Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples. This is the same Judas that will betray Jesus in the garden by pointing him out to the high priest. And for the few, just for a few pieces of silver. As a matter of fact, Judas is money hungry. Yeah, he even was stealing from the treasury. Judas kept the money back. Watch the folks that's keeping the money. You better make sure you can trust them. And everyone knew that the money was coming up missing. Watch who you let handle your money for your organization. Judas then gets loud and starts complaining about the perfume that Mary is putting on Jesus. Judas wants to know why isn't this perfume being sold to put money in the bag so it can be given to the poor? Even though he steals money from the bag and he's really not concerned about the poor. John, who is the writer of this account, John gives the account uh, uh, a, a, a real spin and, and lets us know that Judas doesn't care anything about the poor. Judas is out for what he can get. Don't miss your purpose during your period of gratitude because of those who try to distract the situation. You know that with your planning, there will be someone who does some of this stuff. Yeah, the distractor. Don't don't miss it. Don't don't be distracted. You said Thanksgiving dinner is at noon, and your guests who we won't name show up at three or four o'clock after everyone else has eaten and washed up the dishes. They ignore your schedule and expect you to be happy with them. Everyone is having a nice time and then one, one other person shows up and decides to talk politics. And they decide to tell everybody something that everybody already knew that sets everybody in a bad mood. This person has been waiting to give someone there a piece of their mind, and they decided that they would do it at your dinner party because they knew they were going to be there, and they're going to let them have what they want to have. Oh, you know them. Yeah, they're going to tell them, what, what? Let me give you a piece of my mind. You better hold on to that what, whatever mind you have left. Hallelujah. There is someone there who tells lies about everything, and once they start talking, Folks are like, I wish they would be quiet because they just lie. There are some guests who just want to tell everybody's business at the meal. They start talking about one person's business and then tell another person's business. They don't tell none of their own. Amen. You better watch them. There's someone else who insults the cook. I, I, they'll say stuff like, I don't cook my turkey like that. I don't do my macaroni and cheese like that. I don't do my potato salad like that. Yeah, like, well, if you if you don't want to do it like this, you don't have to eat it, amen. Praise God. We'll give it to somebody. All of these are distractions. Don't miss your blessing of why you came together in the first place. Judas misses it. He is trying to distract the attention off the gratitude that is being shown. Jesus even says to Judas, leave her alone. Leave her alone. Leave Mary alone. It was intended that she should have this perfume for the day of my burial. Jesus talking about his death at the dinner party. Judas does not realize that the perfume that he's smelling is the same smell that will anoint the body of our Lord and Savior who died on that Friday and rose on that third day with all power in his hands. This perfume. This perfume was the same smell that would announce the Savior is transitioning from the earthly body to serve as an expiation for our sins. This nard 
as is what it's called, is a smell of salvation yet to come. Yet Judas is so selfish that he misses it. While Judas is harping on the poor, Jesus says the poor will always be with you, but I will not always be with you. A change is coming. Don't miss it. We clearly see that Lazarus had gratitude that Jesus raised him from the dead. The two sisters, Mary and Martha, had gratitude that Jesus raised their brother, Lazarus, and had they, they witnessed all of this and many other miracles that he had performed. Don't let confusion make you miss your gratitude. Don't, don't let family and friends with bad behavior make you miss your gratitude moment. Don't let others cause you to miss your blessing found in gratitude, which finally, if you don't appreciate, look, someone else will. That's enough to preach on its own. Amen. If you don't appreciate, someone else will. What you've seen in this gratitude moment is not just the act of someone expressing gratitude, but the object or reason for their gratitude is sitting right there. All three, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus are expressing gratitude to Jesus because Lazarus is alive. He's sitting right there at the meal talking to Jesus. He's alive. The, the evidence is right there. You don't have to guess at what the blessing was, but the blessing was sitting right there. Even more than that, Jesus has identified the blessing for humanity was sitting there as well. Jesus was, amen, the blessing. And Mary was getting practice anointing his body with the Lord. When his 33-year ministry as a man would come to an end, Jesus would put off the mortal and take on the immortal. Salvation for humankind was sitting at the table. And if you miss your blessing because of distractions and confusion, God will move on. You have a choice for a specific time, a place, a reason, a season. Don't miss your blessings because of distractions. Verses 9 through 11 speak about the large crowd of Jews who found out that Jesus was Mary uh, and Martha and Lazarus' house. Jesus was there with them. They found out about it. Not only did they want to see Jesus, but they wanted to see the miracle called Lazarus, who was once dead but now is alive and well, sitting there talking to Jesus. Lazarus is sitting there talking with Jesus. Someone say evidence is right there. Evidence is right there. The chief priest already wanted to kill Jesus, but now there is Lazarus who is alive, a miracle, walking miracle. Evidence, they had so much contempt for Jesus that they wanted to kill Lazarus to do away with the evidence of his power, evidence of his glory, evidence of his grace. The chief priest wanted Lazarus gone because now people were seeking Jesus and believing in him. They were seeking Jesus and believing in him. They were seeking Jesus and believing in him. All of this was happening. Judas is creating distractions because he wants to steal the money. He's not worried about the poor or Lazarus or Mary or Martha or salvation. The chief priests are concerned about more people following Jesus as a result of this evidence, sitting there at the dinner table with Jesus. They are out to get Jesus. They are out to get Lazarus. Distractions. Don't miss your blessing. Don't miss it. Don't miss the blessing that God has for you in the moment of gratitude. Don't miss the blessing that God has for you when you keep your mind on Jesus. Don't miss the blessing of recognizing the blessing that God has provided for you. He woke you up this morning, a blessing. Allowed you to get safely to this point, a blessing provided a way for you to survive, a blessing, open doors for you that no man can shut, a blessing. When you were in a strange land, God protected you and guided you, a blessing. When you thought you were alone, God provided people around you to support you and comfort you. When you thought that others might need you, God provided a way for you to provide for them and place you in situations where you could help others and bless them. 
When you were a sinner undone, God sent his only begotten son to the earth to die for the sins of the world. He asked that you repent and believe that you are forgiven. Don't miss your blessing. Don't miss it. Don't miss your blessing worried about a Thanksgiving meal. Don't miss your blessing worried about what others are saying. Don't you know that God has brought you from a long way? Don't you know that God provided for you through danger seen and unseen? And when the att enemy attacks you, look, God protects you. Don't mean you won't get attacked, but when they attack, God protects you. If you don't give God thanks, praise, love, if you don't give God the thanks that he deserves, give God the praise that he deserves, let's do him, someone else will, and you'll miss your blessing. You'll miss your blessing. You'll miss your blessing. Luke 19 and 40 says, I tell you, he replied, if they keep quiet, the stone will cry. Don't let any stones cry out for you. You need to have your own thanks. You need to have your own gratitude. God has been too good for me to be quiet and let a stone cry out. I will thank God for myself. There are things that God has done for me that only me and God know. How about you? Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. Don't miss your blessing. Let us pray. Lord, we just thank you right now for these your servants that are turning their life over to you right now. We're repenting in the name of Jesus, confessing that they are a sinner. They come to you, God. Lord, put people around them to nurture them, to encourage them, to teach them, to strengthen them, to comfort and guide. Lord, as they make their journey toward you, strengthen them. And those that are already on the journey, continue to strengthen them, continue to bless them, continue to help them make their way. Lord, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Brother and sister, we invite you to join this fellowship. You may join this fellowship a number of ways. If you already belong to a fellowship, you can join us by just simply letting us know that you want to join under Watch Care, which means that you keep your membership wherever you are. But as a part of this fellowship, you will be able to enjoy the rights of membership under this opportunity. You may also, if you've never been baptized, we will gladly baptize you into the fall. Let us know. And other ways you can join is you may join by letter. We will gladly receive a letter from wherever you're coming from. Let us know that you want to be a part of this membership. Bring that letter and we will bring you into the fold. And then finally, by Christian experience, amen. You've already been baptized. You've already have come into the fold and, and accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you can just step in and let God use you in this fellowship. We invite you now to come. Today is your day. The door stands wide open. We invite you to come. Amen, amen, and amen. God loved us and loved us so much that God activated his grace for us. Through humanity's history, God continues to love his creation. And through his son, Jesus Christ, we're able to experience that grace through this outward act of what God is also able to do inside of us. We meet here at the table that is open to all. And as you share with us today, our prayer is that God meets you right where you are. We remember as Jesus was preparing to go to the cross, to the hill called Calvary. He had a meal with the disciples during the season of Passover in the upper room. And there he shared with them, but most of all, he demonstrated to them with this act of love as he shared this last meal. And there he took the cup and he blessed it. Let us pray. 
Lord, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for this sacrifice. Bless this bread. Bless this cup. As we remember the great gift that you've given us, or you loved us, loved the world so much that you gave your only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. And he said, this cup represents my blood, which was shed for you. For if often as you drink of this cup, you remember my death till I come. Drink. Jesus took the bread and he broke it. He said, this bread represents my body, which was given for you. For as oft as you eat of this bread, you remember the great gift that I have given for you. Take. Thank you for joining us today in this whole cast. Our prayer is that something was said that will bless you and strengthen you as you make your journey. If you want to join us or need us, reach out to us. Go to www.fountainofchristianchurch.com Now unto him who is able to keep us from all and to present us before his throne with exceeding joy to the only wise God, majesty, dominion, and power.